One time I was waiting for the bus with my son. I remember it was so hot outside and he hadn't had a nap. It seemed like the bus was never going to come. And then this old man walked up. The hat he was wearing stood out to me. I remember that. My son was not giving in, but it didn't seem to bother the man. He looked over at me and said, Looks like you got a real precious one there. I thanked him and looked down the street, hoping to see the bus coming. Honestly, I was probably just embarrassed by the way my son was acting, but before I knew it, he was off on his way. I couldn't help it. I felt compelled to say it. So I just called after him. Sir? Sir? And he turned around. I said, I just wanted to say, thank you for your service. And I'll never forget this moment. He smiled real wide at me like he'd known me my whole life. Gently tipped his hat and said, you're very welcome. You were worth it. Hi, I'm Lee Nish, pastor of Sparks United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship. And welcome to this continuing series on For All the Saints. It's a series that reminds us that God's intention for us is that we all grow into sainthood as part of God's gracious kingdom. But speaking of God's gracious kingdom, uh, man, this kingdom certainly is upside down compared to the culture in which we live. It means we are swimming upstream and it seems to get harder and harder all the time. We're going to explore what that means in today's message that is called the economy of grace. Welcome to worship. Hi, I'm Michelle Scarborough. I'll be reading the scriptures today. It's from the book of Matthew, chapter five, verses one through 12 also known as the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know, we're very close to that season when we start singing these seasonal carols and songs. And so if you recognize any part of what I'm about to sing, please join with me and sing it together. Tis the season to use plastic, fa la 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 Enter stores where we go spastic, fa la 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 Don we now our tech smart savvy, fa la 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 So we make box stores unhappy, fa la 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 Yes, we're beginning to see all of the great commercials that go along with the upcoming season. And uh, sometimes I feel comfort in those commercials. Sometimes I feel a bit pressured because what I'm being told is I need to participate in the economy of consumers. That's right, the economy that tells me I've got to go out and buy, buy, buy. Uh, it may not be buying for myself, but it's buying for everybody in the world around me. And usually it's been because of the relationships that I have with them. And so I'm tempted to uh, use this little card, which uh, allows me to go in most any store and buy most anything I want and not feel the pain of it. Because guess what? I don't get billed for it until a month or two down the, down the line. And then I have to add, add it all up and say, wow, how did I make all these transactions? How did all of this work? Well, we're gonna come up to this, back to this card in just a minute, but before we do, I wanna just tell you of an incident that happened uh, several years ago to me. I was in the South San Francisco Bay Area in San Jose and uh, doing a little shopping. And when I say a little shopping, man, I'm just going to the store to buy one thing. And so um, why I waited so long, I don't know. But by the time I got to Westfield Shopping Center, the line of cars to get in the parking structure was like a mile long. So I'm inching and inching and inching my way. And all the while, my temperature is rising, thinking, surely all of the time I'm waiting to get in this garage, the gift isn't worth it. But finally, I get right up to the garage. And what I discover is three disparate lanes of traffic have to come together into one lane to enter the garage. And so I'm sitting there patiently and I'm seeing two cars come together in front of me from uh, each of the other two lanes. And they come together and move slowly forward. But I'm noticing that one car is not yielding to the other car. In fact, both of them are trying to enter the same lane at the same time, the same space. And it occurs to me they're going to crash in slow motion. And these are expensive cars, you know, they're not like the uh, old Chrysler van that I'm driving. No, these are like brand new Mercedes-Benz and Lexus automobiles. They are top of the line. And so I just sat there and watched what became the inevitable, crunch. Neither driver gave up that one space for the other. Oh, they flew out of their cars and they were mad and they were, it was anything but a seasonal gesture, gesture of joy and goodwill. And I just sat there and realized, well, now it's going to be another half hour until this accident is cleared. And believe me, these are expensive cars, so they're not just gonna drag them off to the side. No, we have to see vehicles come in that will actually put them on the back of tow trucks and take them 
away. Yeah, that was not one of my better shopping moments. But when I think about it, I think, you know what? I haven't had a lot of great shopping moments. There's something in me that just never has been appreciative of opportunities to go, to go out and buy gifts. I really try to avoid it as much as I can and certainly avoid it when, the stars, when their stores are crowded. And so I thought, you know, what would it be like if we could either turn these little credit cards in um, or just simply cast them aside? And instead of using a card that is called a credit card, what if we use a card that could be called a grace card? A card that is not transactional, a card that is transformational, a, a, a card that never, ever makes you pay back what you give. And, and, and the beautiful thing about this card is that the more you use it, the more you give, the more grace there is to give. It's not like you only get a certain amount of credit and you use it up and boom, you're done. It's like God gives us so much grace. In God's economy of grace, the more we give grace, the more grace we have to give. You see, this little credit card is based on the economics of scarcity. That's kind of what the definition of economics is, the, um, uh, the distribution of scarce resources. But in, in the economy of grace, it's more dependent on God's understanding of abundance. It's like we don't live in a world that has too scarce grace to give away. We live in a world where God has graced us with grace upon grace. And, and so, to my friends who were trying to get into the West, Westfield parking structure, um, I did a little take on um, the Beatitudes, which you've already heard uh, read in this service. So I'd just like you to hear what the Beatitudes sound like according to our world of scarce resources. Blessed are the rich, for they own the best stuff. Blessed are the sexy and glamorous, for everyone desires them. Blessed are the powerful, for they shall control the kingdoms of the earth. Blessed are those who get everything they ever wanted. They alone will be satisfied. Blessed are those who are famous when you are pursued and stalked by the paparazzi. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is eternal branding on Instagram and Twitter, now called X. For in the same way, they chased and trolled the influencers and celebrities before you. Yes, money, beauty, power, achievement, fame. These are the mistaken blessings of our God. And I say mistaken blessings because I kind of participate in this myself. I am in conversations where somebody has received something of great value and immediately somebody says, well, they are so blessed. Or God has really blessed them. God has blessed them with this new car. God has blessed them with this new house. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, that's not blessing, that's charm. <laughs> Sometimes we are charmed, charmed by luck. But it isn't God who gives us that kind of blessing. God gives us the kind of blessing that we just heard in the Beatitudes. And this is what I mean by when I say God's kingdom is just simply turned upside down. Listen once again to these words. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. Yeah, that's right. He really said that. Listen one more time. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Man, for an opening statement in a sermon, Jesus really knows how to confuse people. For the most part, those who were gathered on that mount to hear Jesus' sermon that was preached uh, in Matthew chapter 5 through 7, they were all hoping for a word of blessing in the world that they knew. They just wanted to be blessed with enough food to eat. They wanted to be blessed with enough animals to supply them uh, some kind of income. They were, they were totally in the economy of this world, just as we in our culture are in the economy of this world. We may not wish or pray for the same things, but they are all economically based and they are all based on scarcity. What Jesus suggests in these Beatitudes None of this is scarce. It's as abundant as the grace is that God has given you and me and that we have available to give others. All of this is simply a matter of our using God's grace in ways that bless others. That's why when I think of that credit card, I think, you know, the time is coming, <laughs> judgment day, when I'm gonna have to pay that card. But when it comes to the economy of grace, using that card, we never run out. It, it is a it, it, it is an it, universe of love that can flow through us to others if we simply grasp the moment. I wonder if those two people who were the drivers of those automobiles, if they had it to do over again, if they would get in an argument over who should let the other go first. The next time you're in that kind of situation, you're not gonna be probably driving fancy cars, but maybe somebody needs to go through the line quickly and you can just let them go ahead of you. Uh, maybe it's simply somebody who may not have enough money to complete a transaction and you just say, hey, let me pay for it. Include it on my bill. The more we do that, the more we culti cultivate an economy of grace, and the more we cultivate God's holy kingdom.
Would you pray with me now, please? Beautiful, loving, wonderful God, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us and for the heartfelt and righteous and truthful lessons that you bestowed on us. There are so many things you taught us and we wish, <laughs> we so wish we remembered them on the daily. Help us with that. Help us to be more like you. For if we could do that, we could love our brothers and our sisters as you love us. And that is such a beautiful commandment. It's hard to even call it a commandment because it's a gift, really. You commanded it because you wanted to be taken seriously. Just like you take your relationship with us seriously, which is why we need to pray and we need to talk to you. And we need to remember to be in as close to constant contact as we can, which is another beautiful gift you gave us the lovely prayer that we refer to as the Lord's Prayer, because there are times in our lives when we just don't have words, and it's beautiful and it's precious to have the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us in worship today. And uh, during the coming season, I hope you did, you do not feel overly pressured to go out and use something like this little baby. Um, hold it right side up. But when you do, in fact, every time you pull this out of your wallet or your purse, think about pulling out a grace card. Think about spending a little bit of that grace that you have so saved up that you can never run out of. Even in the midst of using this card, you can find ways to use the grace card. And as you do, you will be exercising the economy of grace and you'll not only change your life, you'll change the lives of those around you and the world as well. Go change the world. Thanks for joining us here at Sparks UMC. You can connect and join the conversation on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. To receive the emails that share what's happening in the Sparks UMC community, scan the QR code on the screen, or let us know by filling out the Connect card on our website. If you would like prayer, email us at sparksumcprayers at gmail.com or scan the code. We are grateful for your support of the ministry and mission of Sparks UMC. We'll see you next time. Be blessed. Thank you.